Welcome back. Today is, well, it's, we're day late, but you won't know because normally we're a day late by the time it gets uploaded. Uh, but today is Wednesday, the 17th of uh, February, 2021. Uh, and as always, I welcome my friend Dov. Dov, how have you been? It's been a beautifully, randomly, wonderfully crazy week, uh, but it's good to be back. And uh, yeah, even though we're one day late, but I think today is going to be a bit of a different show. So exactly. um, because this week um, on Saturday, uh, so we're challenge show is going to be celebrating three years anniversary. And, and actually, and I thought that it would be really cool to interview you for the first time because you've been interviewing so many people <laughs> and just to, to, to kind of get behind the idea and maybe reflect on some of the conversations that you were having as well. So if that's your thing, stay tuned and listen to our conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It, even fun that is funny. So the first, the first interview on Sourcing Challenge show was uploaded on the 20th of February, 2018. Uh, the interview that I did with Trish Revel. What goes before that is it took me about three weeks to edit that interview. So uh, like the official day is on Saturday. And then like, I don't even want to think about the three weeks that I took. And anybody who's done a podcast, a YouTube show, or basically, you know, written a master thesis, anything that has to go out in the public, you'll know why. I, I hadn't done any video editing. So one, I had to learn that. And two, uh, when if you like hearing your own voice, you're going to be very much in the minority because people don't. And when you add video to that, you, you end up doing a lot of. So I had a lot of small things that I was cutting out while I was learning how to cut things out. Uh, and yeah, that that kind of what goes behind that, but also why it ended up being the twentieth uh, because I think we recorded it sometime in January. Um, so yeah, by the time I actually got it uploaded, it was end of February. So let's travel back in time even before January, before you even were recording. So how did you come up with an idea? And do you remember uh, when did you come up with an idea? I, I do. Um, like the sourcing challenge had been something we talked about. So Aaron Lintz, who like was you know part of the sourcing challenge, the kind of idea of the sourcing challenge was very much on... We all do a lot of hackathons. We all do things like that. Uh, part of the what you know the sourcing challenge was like let, let's work on something around that. Like Aaron has for the longest time been my mentor, uh, somebody that I was learning a lot from. But at the same time, Aaron has been a very big part of uh, coming up with questions and leading the the, the SourceCon Grandmaster Challenge, which is also just been going on this week. Um, so by the time you hear this, you're already too late. Um, so if you didn't do round one, um, you know, you would have done that. Um, so I kind of knew, but I wanted to do something more than that. As I like, I love hackathons, but it's very much one, it's individual based and two, I, I would like something to be more with teams and two, it's very much ad hoc or once a year, could we do something, you know, more. So that was the kind of original idea. Uh, but also around training, around how do we kind of do more of a site where we can get back and, and people can can kind of share where, where, where people learn specifically about sourcing. Uh, a lot of the things out there and the conferences and things like that, again, it's very much you go to a conference, it's once a year, what happens in between? Like, how, can we do something more ongoing? So we kind of had a couple of years about what we wanted to do. Um, the show then came up with, there was a kind of couple of things. Uh, Guillaume Alexander, put out some short videos that he'd done in January, uh, which is very much like he was kind of fish eye perspective, talking to his camera that was above him, um, talking about, I think GDPR was the big thing at that point uh, because 2018 is when GDPR was finally getting implemented after two years of period when nobody had thought about it. Uh, and that was, he was talking about, it's all in French, but I, I just, it was short videos and it was about getting out there. Um, the paired sourcing, Jer and, and James was doing a hundred days of content, which ended up being, I think, 90 something and not really every day. Uh, so they were doing YouTube. Um, they'd done a podcast in the past, which I liked, but it kind of been discontinued. Um, Trish started his uh, growth hacking um, Facebook group that year as well, uh, which was partly why Trish is like, the first guest I interviewed. Uh, I just saw as well, um, Katrina Kippen started her, her own company, Three Years Media, um, was 
that week. I think that was three years ago this week as well. Um, so everything was kind of there. Uh, but especially like, uh, oh, and, and Katrina Collier had her, like I've been on her, uh, you know, when they were still on Blab, I've been on her show. Uh, she's a good friend. And I was like, I, I want, I'm missing something in terms of like ongoing podcasts where people kind of talk more about what they do in sourcing. Uh, we had Air Source. Uh, which was like Andy, who you work for, uh, and, and Catherine, but that was like once a month. And it was very much something like, I, I, I want more than that. I want more stories. And a lot of the kind of podcasts that are in our industry is like, it's either interview shows where people don't get the time to answer, or it's like, like what you and I do now, where it's like, we just talk about news, but uh, you know, there's not really any guests on. So I, I kind of wanted something where you can get to know people better and also where I could interview people from different countries doing different industries uh, and get their stories. So yeah, that's kind of what it all came together. But I think the final one was like, okay, if, if paired sourcing can do every day, then I should be able to just get something out and start interviewing people. And, you know, that's what I, I started doing um, and then learning to edit and things like that on top of it. Okay. And how did you? Okay, so Tris was sounds like it was, was an obvious choice for the very for, for the very beginning, but then uh, I remember when you originally shared the idea. It was you had the idea of doing fifty interviews and to do a book about it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you, you know, what I loved about it that you you were really focused on doing uh, on inviting people from very diverse backgrounds as well, um, and and to give. Uh, to give that space for people to share their stories and um, I think what is brilliant that well there's one sentence slogan that, from you that I will always remember that uh, every, every everyone has a story and um, looking back from from all of the people that you spoke to do you remember like uh, what comes to your mind like what were the most maybe surprising uh, conversations that you didn't expect because you know sometimes we when we start when we have an idea what we're going to be talking about you know things can go a very different way during the conversations um, do you remember any of them no i think in general i mean all of them is like i started out with my friends like people who i knew uh, but i think and that's the main thing i got with the show as well it's like you know, part of the, the home preface was a lot of the friends that we have in the industry is people we meet at conferences or we meet at events and things like that. What you don't get at events is that you don't sit down over a beer and you're like, okay, tell me your life story. Uh, you know, you would do that sometimes. And then sometimes I, you and I have known each other for the longest time as well, but it's like the long, you know, the more calls we have, the more we get into those stories that you're not necessarily going to, you're not going to share that the first time you meet. Um, but that's the kind of things that I wanted to. So Aaron Lintz, uh, who was, I think, you know, he's one of the first interviews as well. But it's like, it's, it's a really good friend, uh, obviously part of the sourcing challenge. But I never knew, like the whole, like I knew he was in sourcing and kind of what he did now. But you never know kind of like, how did you end up on, you know, here? Um, so, and all of those stories and like people that I know well from the industry uh, constantly surprised me of how they get in. The, similar to when, when I get interviewed by other people and they're like, oh, okay, so you've been in sourcing for a long time. I was like, well, technically I've only been a sourcer since 2013. Um, so it's like, yes, like I'm a specialist now in sourcing and I've been in recruitment for 19 years, but I haven't called myself a sourcer or been specializing in sourcing until I came back to the UK in 2013 and, and really focused on it. So it's like, and a lot of people are like, oh, I, you know, and Aaron is the same story. You know, where he's like, well, I came from something completely different. And a lot of us kind of have. And and you get that because per definition, it's like because we're talking at SourceCon or Sourcing Summit and we're doing sourcing training that we've done this for 15 years. And it's there's very few that's done that. Like you have the likes of, of Shali Shekel and Glenn Gutmacher, um, you know, that has literally done it for 20 years and been training in it. But um, there, the, you know, there's not a lot of those. Um, and I talked to Shelly Shekel very early on. I think part of the, sh the idea with the show came already at um, Sourcing Summit in Amsterdam. So that would have been October 2017. Uh, I spoke at that conference. Aaron Lynn spoke at that conference. Uh, my later boss, uh, Natalie Glick, who was on the show as well, spoke at the conference with Balash. 
about setting up a sourcing team, um, you know, that was then the talk that later enabled me because I knew part of what they were doing that like why it was interesting for me to join that team because I heard that talk. Uh, but there, like I had spoken to Shelly about like the idea of that I wanted to show. Um, part the video conversation piece as well. I think that was even before that. I met Hong Lee uh, for I think we went out for pizza. Um, that would have been in the summer of 2017 about an idea of having a show and kind of interviewing people in the industry and what he thought of it. Because obviously with like now the brain food is what 24,000 people every Sunday get the newsletter. When I signed up, it was like 1500, something like that. Um, but Hong was somebody I valued his opinion and obviously him being in the kind of publishing within our industry, I kind of like, I wanted to see what he thought of it. Um, so yeah, it, it was an idea that kind of been brewing for a long time. Um, Catherine and Andy was doing, like they were going to Sosu and recording people interviews and then putting in the air source later. Uh, the recruiting daily team uh, had gone to SourceCon, uh, was doing something similar where they were like pulling people out after the session, kind of doing interviews. Uh, Jackie, who's now at Seekout, uh, when Jeremy was still like, they were kind of doing that. So it's like, so I knew that it's something like that had been done kind of live and kind of pulling it in. But I wanted to see, could you do something more like more regular? And then, yeah, just getting different stories. So I set myself that, yeah, the target of having 50 people, the book idea kind of came later. Uh, and it's, some, it's still something I'm working on. I just realized that it takes a lot more, especially when it's other people's stories. Like, I don't just want it to be a book of transcripts because... You want transcripts, go to YouTube, download the transcript. Um, you can just, you know, it's, there's text, uh, but it's just text. It's like, I, I don't want it to be that. So it's very much like, what's the red thread I want through it? Um, and it, it's still something I definitely, that we're working on and want to get out. But it's very much that of like, I set myself a couple of targets. It's like, I want, um, I want an equal distribution of male and female. And I wanted to avoid having too many people from one country. So that was why I had a target of having a male and a female, non-binary, whatever you want to call it, uh, but not just be all male heavy, uh, because a lot, of, a lot of things in our industry, the people who write articles, um, it used to be a lot of the, the speakers at conferences were male, uh, not because there's more of us in the industry, but because we have a it's easier for us to get on stage and, you know, listen to our self talk. It is um, changing right now. And that's really beautiful. Um, it's changing because the organizers have made the change, like they're specifically yes. targeting. And I've had the same thing. The hardest people I had to convince to get on the show are female, like female sourcers, because they don't think they have a story, which is why I come back to this like everybody has a story. Uh, and there's been, there's been interviews that are on the, the channel that has very few views. Uh, I, like I know one of the ones that has the least views uh, and had early on, um, but I met somebody at an event where what, that you were organizing that said that specific episode, I just had to source in that country. And I went and I watched that episode. And I know that's one of the episodes that's only been watched like 40 times. But I'm like, and I said, look, if one person can take away something from your interview, if we have one person either learn quicker or just get the motivation to continue or realize that sourcing is for them, then all the work that I'm doing is worth it. So I'm telling everybody, everybody has a story and there is going to be somebody out there that's going to want to hear that story. And a lot of it is for me. It's like, well, I, I want to interview these people. I want to get their story. I want to find out how to source in Armenia and Israel and whenever I, I find know. Whenever I find somebody yeah. that can, you know, show me that can interview in China. So if you're listening to this and you know a sourcer in China that is not afraid of talking to me, uh, please let me know because I'm still, I'm trying to find out, like, as a Chinese person, how do you source in China? Because uh, it's like, that's one of the big mysteries for me. It's like, there's a lot of countries I would like to do that in, um, you know. Uh, West Africa. I know we have a listener in Senegal. So again, reach out to me. I would love to get your story. You know, things like that. That's what intrigues me. Uh, when we got uh, Kimoko on from Japan was one of those that I've been like, I chased her for six months to get her on the show. Uh, she was a referral from Martin Freeman, who used to work with her. Uh, and we got her on and it was exactly that. Whereas the people are like, how do you source in Japan? And she's like, LinkedIn. 
which is like everybody that I need to talk to needs to speak English. If they're mm. not on LinkedIn, if they speak English, they're on LinkedIn. So like, she, and she was saying, I do South Korea. It's the same thing. Um, and it's like, I can say that, but people won't believe me. But when a Japanese source of working for Indeed, who used to work for Facebook says it, people are like, okay, fair enough. Um, but those are the kind of stories. It's like, you don't, you don't get, I'm not, you know, if I'm lucky, I get to travel to a conference with somebody from Japan is like, I've been lucky to be in a conference with people from China is, you know, things like that. You get the stories, but like, you don't get in depth. And that's what I wanted to bring out with the show. I, I, I can personally connect with what you said about trying to chase people. Um, because when I discovered your show, it was way long, uh, way later. Uh, I think it was maybe April because I was taking some time away from sourcing and I was just focusing on music and, and trying to find musicians for one Swedish startup. And then when I was already kind of coming back to Europe um, after spending some time in Egypt and Malaysia and India, um, I started listening to your show and it was so mind blowing to, to hear conversations from people that I was following and learning and, and, um, and just, yeah, get, getting knowledge from, and especially you know, you had a lot of speakers from that I've met at the conferences who became my friends. And um, actually even later, you know, because that all happened in the last few years. <laughs> and, um, and I remember thinking like, oh my God, this is so cool. I hope one day I will be good enough to be on the show. And then two days later, you sent me a message. Hey, do you want to tell your story? It's like, what story? I don't even have a story. <laughs> no, you have a story. I want you on my show. It's like, no <laughs> it's, and, and as well it took it's, quite, it's gotten, quite a while to convince me to, to to talk about stuff and it's gotten harder i mean even especially now because people look back and they're like oh because they know a lot of the people or they've seen a lot of the people speak at on stage at conferences that have in, been interviewed like people now like it's even harder if they don't feel that they're like well known they're like oh but that like that so in the beginning is very much, and I think like, especially like the first, the first year, um, cause I took a large break after episode. So after Johnny, so that would be in like 39 or no 41 episodes. Um, so that's like, you know, that's at least six months they worked on that. Um, we were doing a lot of local events with SourceCon, so SourceCon local. So a lot of the people that I ended up interviewing, like Johnny and Francesca, they're like the, the last two of kind of season one, uh, I met at SourceCon meetup in Dublin. Um, so indeed in Dublin was hosting us for SourceCon Ireland. Uh, one, because I like I lived in Dublin and I know that there's not a lot of events going on. There's a lot of events, but not in sourcing and recruitment. So we had 110 people uh, at the Indeed office. Um, and, you know, went out for drinks afterwards, as you do. And I got to talk to a Danish sourcer who works for Facebook and an Italian sourcer who was working for Indeed, but she was going uh, and, and she was, um, was going to be the recruitment manager at uh, SurveyMonkey in Dublin and things like that. And I was like, okay, I want your story because I'm like, one, I found another Danish guy who studied at the same university as me from my hometown. Um, and an Italian, you know, so things like that. So a lot of the kind of people I ended up interviewing were people I met at events or very beginning, uh, a lot of the people in the beginning were people who were going to be speaking at the first SauceCon in Europe. Um, so people I didn't know, but they were speakers. So I was like, well, you have a story enough to become a speaker at SourceCon Europe. Um, so for me, it was a way to get to know the other speakers. Uh, Sophia is a good example as well. Sophia, who is now a really good friend of both of us, she wanted, like, I had a ticket to give away for SourceCon. Um, so we put that out on social media. It was like me, Jan Tixer, Katrina Collier. Like we had tickets that we could give away. And so we would, you know, draw from the people who'd commented on our post and Sophia won my ticket. Uh, and then I was like, well, let's, you know, I want your story as well. Cause since we're gonna, you know, you're gonna be world? my speaker. Yeah, you're gonna be my speaker body at the conference. I wanna get your story. Uh, and like having a Swedish sourcer was another thing. I was like, I know there's not a lot of those. Um, mm -hmm. So all the, like, there is, there is a story for every one of those interviews. Um, and I always, and now I have a large Trello board of people I would love to get on the show. Um, 
uh, when we did the amazing hiring training last year, I looked a lot about where are people coming from, because uh, that was around tech sourcing. And some of the countries that I saw people from, I was like, oh, I definitely you know there, there's people from countries I've never heard of. And I was like, San, San Lucia in the Caribbean, there's actually like a group of sources that works for a Canadian company. I'm like, I want to get their story. Um, working with Amazing Hiring as well, got me in, in touch with some, like the, there's a huge community of sources in Armenia, which isn't a country you necessarily think of as sourcers, uh, but there's a story behind that. And that's why I got Ash on and for, to talk about that. And things like that, like this, for me, there's always a story for how I got to think of them or how I got to meet them. Um, but that's what I wanted to get out. And yeah, I took a large break in between like episode 41 uh, and then, I had like three interviews recorded. I think you were one of them, the original recording. Uh, Glenn Cathy was the other one. Uh, and then uh, one more in the US who um, I still have to do a follow up with. We did, we re-recorded yours. I pinged Glenn and I said, look, I looked through the recording and it's like, nothing you said was, uh, was something that was time sensitive. And I would love to just put up the episode. So he said, yeah, go ahead. So even though I recorded that in like the fall or summer or something like that, I didn't release that until the year after, so 2019. Um, and then, yeah, put the episode with Glenn out, uh, or even there was more like, no, we recorded in 2019, but it wasn't until like, yeah, uh, 2020 that I actually got it up and, and things like that. So. And then, yeah, the lockdown happened. So all of a sudden I had way too much time on my hands. Uh, I started doing three episodes a week, uh, which is what got us from basically 42 to 60, I think 64, 67, something like that, uh, episode 64. But then there's the tools episodes and the, yeah, the, the, the talk show things we did last year. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of story of, and then now I have, I think eight episodes that I've recorded that I still need to edit and find out whether they're still relevant or I need to be record some of them. So yeah, things like that. But then we started this in, uh, in, uh, at Christmas Just time. Christmas. Uh, Cause like, I st exactly. I wanted to do it. I knew like, you know, as well, like I ping you every time we finish the show and I'm doing the editing and then like whatever hours later, I'm like, okay, this is how much it took me to edit it. So, so in that case, uh, sounds like, um, what we're going to be experiencing next is the season three. Um, and you yeah, already mentioned essentially, you yeah, a, season three. Yeah, so you already have, as you mentioned, at least eight episodes that were already recorded. And after you do your uh, audit and to see whether those um, <laughs> uh, conversations are still relevant um, or not, I have a feeling that most of them will be anyway, um, unless yeah. there were like certain really specific things about the tools that might have disappeared. But even even mm -hmm. you know you can just cut it out. But so. What I would love to hear, and I'm pretty sure that those who are following the show would love to hear, when potentially we could start hearing the season three and conversations from that. Do you have any ideas? No, I mean, it, it might be, yeah, it might be soon. Um, I have a bit more time now than I've had for the last year, basically. Um, so I'm hoping that I can get around to actually, I have edited some, I can get around to editing it. And uh, yeah, we should be, I think March uh, should be a good kind of to, to strive for and starting to get up. So you're still going to have a weekly show with Dove and I, uh, but then yeah, once every second week or, or something like that, you can start I, getting shows. I, I just, I just realized that I said February, we're already in February and the February is coming to an end. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Like this is what you get when you live in a lockdown. So yeah, March is, yeah, yeah, that's what I meant, March. So you said you have a very big list of people that you would love to talk to. Um, is there anyone on your list that you know it potentially might be harder for you to reach? Uh, and maybe you want to say no. that, hey, maybe you want to just say out loud to everyone, like admit, look, I want to talk to you. <laughs> Something like that, but they would no, I mean, it... it it's gotten easier for me to get the people who would normally be, you know, speakers at conferences um, because they can see it's like, okay, there's people watching this. It's gotten harder to get the people who uh, people haven't heard of. It's getting, it's gotten harder to get them to talk to me. 
Um, so that's actually my biggest challenge. I have a long list of people I would like to get their story, mainly because of what country that they're in. Um, so I, I, I did a list of every country in the world and, like, and I, I treated it like a sourcing project. It's like, can I find people who look like they have a clue about sourcing in each country? Uh, you know, there's countries like France, UK, Netherlands, uh, US, uh, you know, that's easy. Uh, like I, I've always tried to like, I, I don't, I don't want to get like, there's a lot of Dutch people on the show. Like, you know, no matter what you do, it's like, at the beginning, I wanted to try to limit that to only two, but that's hard. I'm like, you can't limit it to only two in America because like in the US, because it's like, eh, there's a lot of other voices. So kind of for season two, uh, end of last year was like, okay, so I don't want everybody to be from the same state in America, but I realized that every state in America might as well be another country. So having somebody from Texas, you know, you're not going to get the same story as somebody recruiting in New York or Tennessee or, you know, wherever they are, Illinois. Um, so I'm like, okay, let, let, let me at least like get somebody from every country in the world and get people from different states in America. Um, so that's what I kind of started to do. Yeah. But I still have a long list of people from countries that you wouldn't think of. And that where I want to know, like other than you know China, which is the big one for me, is like, how do you recruit in China? Uh, because it's like, it's one of those things. It's like, it's a story that I know people want to, to, to learn about. Um, and I, it's hard to get people to talk about. But there's other countries as well where I'd never, like I wouldn't necessarily think about sourcing there but if I did, I wouldn't know where to start. So like South America is one thing. It's like, uh, I talked to John, uh, who is, uh, you know, is a good friend of ours and come to conferences and, you know, they can talk about some of South America. I had Kelly on in, in episode two about Brazil. Uh, I worked with her at that point and now she works for Google. Um, I had another one from Brazil on as well, who works for Dell. Um, and he's like, like Brazil is well covered now. Um, and you had Argentina, John was on there, but like South America is a big continent. There's a lot of stories still to be told, uh, you know, Ecuador, Chile, like, you know, Venezuela and things like that. I'm like, I would love to get stories from there as well, as well as all the smaller countries in like the Caribbean, like where I know that there's people who do sourcing. So may I suggest one thing then, apart from the fact that you have already have a big list of names and people in different locations, we have, uh, we have listeners from everywhere right now. And, um, and, and with every single episode, we kind of, it seems like we're reaching more and more and wider <laughs> and wider. So if you're listening to this right now, and if you survive all of our ramblings, you know, uh, through the <laughs> middle of the, of the show, and if you feel that you have the story to share, that you potentially had something unique experience in your career, uh, why don't you just reach out to us and send an email um, I'm sure you know we can we can share that in in the show notes, and reach out to Mark uh, to me and share your story, uh, because season three is coming and uh, it would be really cool to hear stories from those who are actually listening to our show, uh, because you obviously care and you want to learn and potentially your story could um, teach something you know teach others uh, as well. So do reach out to us. We had something planned and we're still planning to do something to celebrate the, the anniversary. Uh, it's still kind of like, we have a couple of ideas of things we want to do. So stay tuned. There's going to be some surprises. Uh, obviously looking back at three years, it's a, it's a, it's a lot. It's been a lot of work for me. I probably put, you know, a couple of hundred hours in interviewing, editing, uh, getting things out there. And I love doing that um, with some bigger breaks. Like uh, if those three years is probably, you know, a year and a half of break in between uh, in different stages. But there's still things that we would like to do of come out and celebrate. Uh, if you haven't already, go back and, you know, either listen or watch to the old episodes. Uh, I know there's gold in there. I, I can see from the stats that there's episodes that have not been as popular as other ones. Uh, I know personally there's a story, like I loved every one of those stories and I learned something from every one of those interviews. So, I believe you will as well. Um, so go back and have a look at, you know, the ones that you maybe skipped because it didn't resonate with you at the time and, and listen to it again or, you know, listen to it for the first time. Because uh, I definitely I definitely know that there's going to be something in there that you might not know that you need right now, but at a later stage in your career, 
that's going to be the thing. And that's going to be the person that you might want to reach out to and say, I heard that episode where you talked about this. Can we, can we jump on a call and talk? Because now I need that. And I would love your expertise. And on all of the interviews I've done, that's very much, I, I know people are up for that because they spend, you know, at least an hour with me on the call. Um, and I know a lot of them do that. And I love that. Like people like Dean has been doing that for as long as I remember, where if anybody asks a question and Dean can see like, okay, this requires more explanation, he'll jump on a call and spend an hour with you. Uh, and every one of the ones that I have been on the show, I know that they're all like that. So definitely use that, but look, look back and see, did you miss something? And, and you know, something you could still learn from any of those episodes. And that's exactly how our friendship started as well. I remember when I was asking a bunch of questions and they're like, hey, do you have some time? We can, I can show in a video on a Zoom call. And I was like, I'm sure you're more busy than me. It's like, <laughs> you have time to show me how to do things, you know? So, you know, and that's just beautiful. Actually, um, I just have an idea and uh, we've, we haven't talked about this, but maybe this can be really cool. Um, what if we uh, would ask you to share your favorite episodes? Use this week uh, to share uh, the episode that connected, like you connected the best or something that was surprising, something that you learned or something that, um, you know, maybe made you change the way you see the person who was sharing the story, um, share it on socials, tag both, both of Mark and I, um, add a, a hashtag sourcing challenge show. And, and we would pick one person for something very special. And yeah. what I wanna suggest, because we haven't spoken uh, to, uh, about <laughs> this, so this is, you know, Mark is like thinking, oh my God, what the hell is going on? But uh, I would be extremely happy to, to have like a more like a one-on-one -on -one session with someone uh, who, you know, out of those people who would um, share, uh, because give love to the people who were, you know, sh spending their time in uh, giving something to you, uh, because uh, you have people in your network who might benefit from those conversations. And if you found it useful, I'm sure more people will. And then um, we could do like, I don't know, 90 minutes of, you know, Mark and I and you, and we talk anything sourcing, you know, just for you. We can answer any questions. We maybe we can show you something. And we don't have to record it. <laughs> no, it's not going to be, it, it's not, it, it's not no, going to exactly. be done for it, the recording. It's not for it's a show. For, it's, it's going to be done for you. Yeah, it's going to be done for you privately, but I think this would be a very unique twist. So if that sounds uh, like something that you would like to try, um, pick an exactly. episode, share it on socials, and make sure to tag us. And then we will see who's going to be the lucky winner next week. Yeah, cool. Let's leave it in that. Um, Dov, thank you very much. This was, uh, well, it was the start to our, uh, our week of celebrations of uh, three years of Sourcing Challenge and Sourcing Challenge show. Obviously this show was a bit newer. Uh, I'm looking forward to in, um, what, two and a half years when we can look back at three years of Sourcing Challenge Weekly. Uh, definitely the appetite is there. Um, as always, if you know somebody who you think should, um, should listen to us or watch the show, let them know, um, share it with your colleagues. If you're lucky enough to have other people who care as much about sourcing as we do, share it with them as well. Um, anything uh, can help getting the word out there. Uh, yeah, we've been around for three years. So there's definitely, if you're new to the show, there is, well, there's seven hours of Sourcing Challenge weekly. And then there's another 20, nine hours of sourcing challenge show for you to go back and watch and or listen to um so you should you should be good for a couple of days if you're completely new to the show uh, and welcome if you are um but yeah this show will be back next week um where both i and dove are going to find what's going on uh, find out what's going on in the space we have some interesting events coming up so hopefully there's going to be a, a lot of goodies coming out of that and uh, stories for us to tell Dov, what do you have going on in the next, uh, the next week? I don't even know where to begin uh, because I will be starting a job on the 1st of March. Uh, so I still have quite a few things that I need to complete um, um, because, you know, my, the way I manage my time will be very different going full-time after 
one and a half years uh, gap. So <laughs> it, it is very different. So now I'm trying to reevaluate all the projects that I'm doing on the music side of things and to reshuffle everything so that my team would be able to take full control of everything. So without my involvement, you know, so I would have more time for other things. So uh, it's exciting, it's really cool. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it because 1st of March is a new chapter as well. It's spring and hopefully it's gonna be as well, something more positive to all of us as well. So um, that's me, what about you? Uh, same, uh, obviously I have a lot of editing to do uh, with all of those season three episodes. Uh, yeah, we're working on some things as well to, to celebrate uh, the anniversary, uh, kind of looking at, you know, looking back at all the old show and, and, and taking things out of that. So definitely not going to be uh, yeah, sitting around doing nothing. My wife's still working uh, hard on a project that I'm, you know, trying to support her on or at least uh, to support her with not having to do a lot of things at home uh, because she's busy every day. Um, so yeah, there's going to be lots to do. Um, so yeah, until then, we'll see you next week. And uh, yeah, tag your favorite episode of the Sourcing Challenge show. Um, let us know what you liked about it, or maybe like me, where you got to know somebody that you met later and having, you know, heard their interview that just gave you a different way of starting the conversation and, you know, things like that. Uh, and yeah, tag with the Sourcing Challenge show and uh, we'll, we'll draw a lucky winner on the show next week. And don't forget to tag the person that was interviewed at the show as well, because this is potentially that bridge that can connect you and that person. So even though if that's your biggest hero, uh, <laughs> you have no idea how it is easy to connect with someone when you, when you say a good word about them. So Especially this do that, and we see you next week. Perfect. See you then. See ya. <laughs>